This is Long John Silverbells, and I'm having a problem on my vessel right now. Blimey! And blow me down. I hate when I'm yelling at one of my men, and they say, Hey, Captain! And a tooth comes shooting out and hits me right in my eye. So what we need is a good chef to show us some sort of a fruit dish. Because we got to get the fruit going to the men so that they don't get the scurvy. Silver bells. I'm Long John Silver Bells. It's Christmas time on the high seas. All right, I'm going to get back to taking a cork. Well, aye, Captain. Scurvy Master, at your order, sir. Hello, everybody. Good tidings, Merry Christmas, whatever it is you celebrate. I wish you a good celebration. But what we're going to talk about today is the beautiful pear salad. Now, what is a pear salad? Let me tell you, when I first saw it as a kid and my mom first set these on the table, I thought they looked delightful. It's a pear half. Yep, just a simple half a pear right out of a can. It's a dollop of mayonnaise. Use any mayonnaise you want, but in our family, there's only one mayonnaise, and that's Duke's mayonnaise. Now, I can't get Duke's mayonnaise up here in Minnesota, so if anybody comes from the south to stay with us for a few days, even one day, I ask them to bring me Duke's, even though I can get it on Amazon. That's usually how I do it. Use whatever mayonnaise you'd like. Maraschino cherries. No stems, and I cut mine in half for presentation. So I just take a knife and I slice them in half, you need some paprika. You need some extra sharp, grated up cheddar cheese. And I do mean extra sharp. I prefer your Cracker Barrel because I love saying Cracker Barrel as much as I can. Now, you don't want a white cheese. This is yellow. A yellow cheese makes a better presentation on there. Because if you use a white cheese, it just blends in with your pear and it's just too much white. And what you need is that green and that white gold and that yellow and that red and that paprika and that mayonnaise is covered up down in there up underneath all that cheese. Now my mother insists on the cheese being grated fine. What I mean by that is if you have a hand grater, it's got your big grating cuts right there. My mom says, oh no, use the side with the little graters and it makes a little bit of a finer grate. And one little trick with your graters when you're grating cheese, and you know if you have to grate a lot of cheese at the holiday time, you'll start to get a buildup of cheese on your grater. Spray it with a little bit of Pam first, and you won't get as much of a buildup, and you can grate away. But I feel great for telling you that. Now, number one, take a lettuce. Take any kind of lettuce you want. Back in the old days, mom always used iceberg because people didn't use arugula or romaine that much. But I've got romaine lettuce here, and I always considered the, the lettuce just as an appetizer. My mother would always try to go, it's a salad, son, eat the lettuce. I never did. I always just ate the pear and all the other stuff, and that's still what I do, but it looks nice on the lettuce. Then what you do is you take your mayonnaise. Now, I use a, uh, from my mother, Silver Collection, her teaspoon, and you put a dollop of mayonnaise. I take a little short spoon here just to kind of put that right into the hole of the pear, all right? Boom. Then what we do is we take the grated cheese and you put the cheese right on top of the mayonnaise. Nice blob. I like a lot of the cheese on there. Next, you take your maraschino cherry half. I just use my fingers because I like to press it right down in there a little bit. And the way I put it, I don't put the smooth side up, I put the cut side up. Don't know why? My mom always did. I think it catches a little bit of juice, so that's what I do. Well, that one popped. Put one here, and put one there. That looks festive already. I take my maraschino jar with my juice, and I take my spoon, and what I do, I like a little juice. Because to me, the juice was the part that really brought it all together. And I just drizzle a little extra juice and that's your basic setup. Then you take your paprika, but just sprinkle a dash around on it like that. You don't need too much. And boom, that right there is your pear salad. And the one thing about a pear salad is they taste better the next day when you bring the leftovers home and that thing's sitting up against some turkey and some casserole and some ham and it's all smashed up and the cherry juice is down in there. Mm. 
Not meant to be at with your fingers. I'm just doing that to show off. So the history of the pear salad in our family. First time I saw it on a Thanksgiving. We always had it in our family at Thanksgiving. We had it at Christmas, I'd say about 50% of the time. When we were lucky, when I cried and said, Mom, can we have the pear salad? I love it so much. I think she got the recipe from my Aunt Hun in Ennery, South Carolina. And we always considered the pear salad, as my dad used to say, he put it politely. He say, son, the pear salad is a pauper's sorbet. And I'd say, what does that mean, dad? He said, well, sorbet is something you eat, son, in between courses to cleanse your palate. And the pear salad is your pauper's or your poor man's sorbet. So it looks beautiful on a holiday table. It's easy to make. You might be a hit with it. Some people might think it's gross. Good, that's more for you. And enjoy your holidays and be kind to one another, at least for a day. Well, my name is Long John Silver. Silver bells, silver bells. It's Christmas time. I'm so pretty. Come on, Bean.